Hi guys, welcome back to another video of me solving JEE Advanced Questions and today I have the JEE Advanced 2019 Question 7 of Paper 2. Well, why don't we get into the question? So, another linear algebra question. And you're saying this question is a huge up level from our last video. Hmm. And another note about JEE Advanced Questions is that the reason why they're hard is solving one question in the test is basically like solving four, four different questions because you have to check if A is correct, if B is correct, C is correct, and if D is correct. And I know how you guys feel because this test is indeed super, 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 super hard. And for those who actually make it to, to whatever university you're aiming for, Congratulations. So, how do we solve this question? Well, the first thing to notice is that we see this relation. This relation means that R is similar to Q. And if you don't know any of these concepts or these terminology, I would highly recommend you the book that I also explained to you about in the last video, which was the Introduction to Linear Algebra, fifth edition by Gilbert Strong. And I know you guys are really interested in what books I read. I highly recommend that to master JE Advanced Linear Algebra questions. So, well, what's the point of saying R is similar to Q? Well, did you know that if R is similar to Q, then R and Q have the same eigenvalue and the same determinant but they have different eigenvectors but it's not different by that much because they have a relation like this eigenvector is equal to something times this eigenvector so now i'm going to try and figure out that relation so if we know r's eigenvector x and this is equal to an eigenvalue times the eigenvector so x is the eigenvector, lambda is the eigenvalue. Then we try to figure out p's eigenvector. So then we try to figure out q's eigenvector. Well, we can substitute r into this. So it will be p q p inverse times x is equal to lambda x. And now, I'm going to multiply a p inverse to the left, so it will become p inverse p q p inverse times x is equal to p inverse times lambda x. Now, p inverse times p is just an i, so this we can ignore, so it becomes q p inverse times x is equal to since lambda is a scalar, we can take it out. So it becomes lambda times p inverse times x. And look, same. So this is the eigenvector of q. So if r's eigenvector is x, then q's eigenvector will be p inverse times x. Now we do the same, but with q. So qx will equal to lambda x. And now we figure out r's eigenvector. So how do we get q though? Well, I'm going to do some manipulations to this. So I'll just write it on the side. And now I'm going to multiply by p to the right. So we'll get rp is equal to pq. p inverse times p. It's just i, so we can ignore it. And now I'll multiply a p inverse to the left. So we'll get p inverse rp is equal to q. And now sub this all the way here. So we'll get p inverse rp times x is equal to lambda x. And now I'll multiply a p, not p inverse, to the left. So we'll get p times p inverse is i again. 
So we'll get rp times x is equal to p inverse lambda x. And this will equal to p times lambda x. And since lambda is a constant, we take it out. And done. If q's eigenvector is x, then r's eigenvector is p times x. So now, keep this in mind. We will now move on to question d. And I'm going in reverse order. And here is part D on the screen for you guys. So it says that for x is equal to 0, if r of this is equal to 6 times this, then a plus b is equal to 5. Well, something we can tell is that this is the eigenvector, this is the eigenvalue. So, hmm. well, why don't we first figure out q? We plug x into x equal to 0, so it becomes Q is equal to two zero 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 six. Okay, and hmm, if we try and figure out R's eigenvector and prove that a plus b is equal to five, it's going to be a bit tricky, right? Because R is equal to this big bunch. But like I said before, R and q have a relation in their eigenvectors. And q, as we can see, is a diagonal matrix, which is super easy to calculate the eigenvector from. So we can just calculate the eigenvector of q, and if you remember, then r's eigenvector will be multiplied p to the left times that eigenvector. But first, we have to verify that r and q have the same eigenvalue. And since q is a diagonal matrix, then 2, 4, and 6 are Q's eigenvalues. And this one is 6, which is in there. And I'll just tell you that the eigenvector for Q when um, the eigenvalue is 6 is 0, 0, 1. And this is actually super easy to verify. You can do this on your own. So if Q's eigenvector for the eigenvalue of 6 is 0, 0, 1, then we can figure out R's by multiplying p by 0, 0, 1. So we multiply 1, 1, 1, 0, 2, 2, 0, 0, 3. And just a little note, this is a bit fun, that this is a fun fact, that this is a, tri a triangular matrix. And I think you can tell because it's a bit like a triangle. Just moving on, multiply by 0, 0, 1. We will get actually one, two, three. Wow. And one A B, A plus B is indeed equal to five. Tick. Now we will move on to part C. Now here's quest here's answer C on the board for you guys. And for JE questions, you actually need to look very carefully. Because some people will just mistake in this for Q. But look, same, 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 different. So it's not Q. So we're going to have to do this manually. Well, as I said, well, the determinant of R is the determinant of this, right? But uh, we don't want to do that. It's a bit too tricky. But remember what I said at the very beginning in our video, that the determinant of R and the determinants of q are the same because they're similar. So we can just replace this. We can just replace r with q. And the determinant of q is super easy. So we see that the determinant of q or the determinant of r is the same, is equal to, well, when we're calculating determinants, we choose a row, any row, and then we eliminate these entries um rows rows in columns and then multiply by this determinant the next one in the row remove that determinant the next one blah 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 but we don't want to do all three right so look at row number two there's zeros and zero times anything is zero so all you need to care about in row two is the middle entry 
four. So it will be four times. Well, we remove its rows and columns. It will just remain 2x x6. So four times the determinant of 2x x6, which is equal to four times, well, 12 minus x squared, which is equal to 48 minus 4x squared. And now we go on to the right hand side. I won't write this, it's a bit too big. So I'll just write right hand side is we also choose the middle row so we can ignore these just care about this so it will be four times the determinant remove that remove that 2x x5 2x x5 and i will add the eight at the really end this is equal to four times 10 minus x squared which is equal to 40 minus 4x squared. And then don't forget to add the 8. They're the same. So C is ticked. And now we move on to B. So here is B on the screen right now. So let's see. It says there exists an X which is in reals such that PQ is equal to QP. So now P and Q are commutative. And just a little note, if R is similar to Q and P and Q are commutative, then R and Q are actually identical. But this doesn't really do us any good. This is just a fun fact. So if we want to prove this, then we just choose any entry and make it equal. And we choose any entry from both of these and make it equal to Q times P or the other way around. And then we figure out x, then we choose another pair of entries, and then we see if that x value is going to be correct. So why don't we just do pq 1, 1, right? This is the easiest. So p's row 1, q's row 1, it will get 2 plus 0 plus x, which is 2 plus x. And now we let it be the same as qp11 so it will be q is row one so 2xx and p is column one which is 100 zero, zero. so it will be 2 plus 0 plus 0 which is 2 and now we can deduce that x must be 0 and now we do the second most simple case which will be pq of 1 2 And this is equal to P's row number one, Q's column number two. So it'll be X plus four plus X, which is two X plus four, which is X sub X is equal to zero. So it'll be four. And another thing, if X is equal to zero, the chances of these two being commutative is super low because then Q becomes a diagonal matrix. And usually if they're commutative, then this diagonal will be equal to this diagonal. So it's super low chances, but still might be possible. So we still need to double check like this. And then we do QP, one, two, which is equal to Q row number one, P column number two, it will be two plus two X plus zero, two plus two X, which is sub X is equal to zero, two. And of course, we know that four is definitely not equal to 2, so we can say that B is wrong. And now we move on to the last one, A. And now I have A written on the board. So it says, for X is equal to 1, there exists A, there exists a unit vector, alpha i plus beta j plus gamma k for which r times alpha beta gamma is equal to 0, 0, 0. And 0, 0, 0 is equal to 0 times alpha beta gamma, right? So 0 is the eigenvalue of r and this is the eigenvector. So if we want to prove that this is correct, then we need to prove that hmm, 
R has an eigenvalue of zero? Well, we can, if you want to for fun, you can definitely substitute all of this in and calculate R. But as I said, since R is similar to Q, then R's eigenvector, eigenvalue is the same as Q's eigenvalue. So we have to figure out if the eigenvalue of Q is zero. So first we have to substitute in x is equal to one into here. So we get Q is equal to two, one, one, zero, four, zero, one, one, six. And now we need to check if zero is an eigenvalue of this. Well, go back to the very definition of what an eigenvalue is. So if we have a matrix Q, then, and we define its eigenvalue to be lambda, then to prove that lambda is an eigenvalue of Q, or to prove that, or to see what lambda is, we need to prove that the determinant of Q minus lambda I is equal to zero. But here, we're assuming that the eigenvalue is zero. So this is gone. So we need to prove that the, 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 that, the, that, that the determinant of Q has to be equal to zero. Now, let's calculate that. The determinant of Q is equal to, well, again, we choose the middle row, super simple. So it's four times two one one six. And as you can tell, it's not gonna be zero. Not equal to zero. So A is wrong. So the two answers are C and D. Finally. <coughs> well, thank you guys so much for watching and if you enjoy my videos, please consider liking and subscribing. If you want to master something, teach it.